It's Cinemassacre's Monster Madness, Godzilla Thought. One problem with Godzilla 1985 is that Godzilla was on his own. He didn't have any monsters to fight. So for the sequel, Toho decided to hold a contest to write the plot and invent an original monster. As it turns out, it's a weird plot. Scientists find Godzilla's cells and combine them with that of a plant to create a giant plant monster which goes on a rampage. Well then why'd you do that? You don't mix Godzilla cells with a plant unless you want trouble. This tends to be a very overlooked film in the series because Biollante isn't one of the classic Godzilla enemies, but it's definitely worth a look. It's strange, but original. Basically a bunch of tentacles with Venus flytraps at the ends and a giant crocodile mouth. Perhaps if they called it Godzilla vs. Little Shop of Horrors, it would have had more marquee value. Again, the combat scenes with Godzilla fighting the military are great spectacles to watch. They also bring in another new weapon, the Super X-2. Yeah, the usual planes and battleships get boring after a while, so it's always cool to see something new. But at last, I'd like to mention that this one was never released in the U.S. Theatrically. It was never released theatrically in the U.S., but it aired on cable television in the U.S., and it was released on VHS, English dubbed. Yes, I owned it, but it would be the last one that I'd owned for a while, because following Godzilla movies throughout the 90s were not released in the U.S. in any form whatsoever, not until the advent of DVD. However, they were available, fortunately subtitled, as special imports on VHS. Once DVD came around, every Godzilla movie saw a Western release. I hope that clears it up.